Now let's take an example of some of the text options that we've been working with in some of our previous movies. Let's say that I have a pretty robust application that runs 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. And each time it performs a certain operation, it generates a text entry in a log file. Well, if we let that run for a month, it could generate a log file that could be several hundred megabytes and have hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of entries inside of it. So it wouldn't really make sense if you went through it using the less and more commands and tried to dig through and find certain values manually. It would make a lot of sense if we could actually use a certain command to search through the text and display only certain values for us. So using grep, we can actually do that. It's actually going to search for a specific line that contains a string that you specify. It's an extremely flexible search program that will allow you to do some pretty amazing things. So the basic concept of grep is you type in the grep command, you type in whatever text you're looking for, and then your my file is going to be the file name. So it's actually a pretty easy tool to use in addition to being very powerful. Now you can also preserve or ignore case. You can use various pieces in addition to what's normally used with grep. Now there's actually an extended grep and a basic grep when it comes to how you use the syntax with it. There are also egrep and fgrep and depending on what distribution you're using there are many variations of the grep command. They all perform the same thing but they might have extra features or functionality. Now when searching for text, you might not always know the entire string that you want to look for. You may know that, for example, your program produces error codes in the 1700 range. So you know that 1701 through 1799 are the error codes that you're looking for, but you don't know exactly which error code you're going to find. And that's where using regular expressions comes into play. You can basically substitute known characters with the actual value and substitute unknown characters with opposing unique characters that grep will recognize. So we can use an asterisk for example to take the place of many characters. So in the example we used before we could use 17 asterisk to search for every line that contained 17 or any string or individual set of numbers that started with 17. Now if we knew that we were going to use error codes such as 1701 through 1709 for example so that one character is the one that we know we're missing but we also have 17,000 error code numbers. Well we don't want to pull back everything that starts with 17 because then we'd get back error codes we weren't looking for. And in this example, we can simply type 170 period, and it will search for all values that start with 170 and only have four characters. So let's take a quick look at an example of what we might use grep for. Now, as you remember, we created a really sorted .txt file in one of our earlier movies. So if we look at that, we can see that we have duplicate values in a couple of different places. Now let's say for example we want to look for anything that has log inside of it. Well that's going to be pretty easy for us. So we type in the value that we're looking for and we type in the file name that we're looking into. And as you can see it pulls back all of those records. So just as a quick example, let's say we want to search the anaconda log file for a value such as INST. Well, we only found one line and it was called install. So if we actually look at the first line there is install and that's the only place where the certain letters that we look for will be found together. So as you can see, grep is very fast and very accurate in how it performs.